be our uh, last video um, about branching processes. Uh, in the previous video, we showed a very cool graphical kind of proof about um, uh, why under certain conditions, specifically when the mean of the offspring distribution is one or less, the population will certainly definitely go extinct with probability of extinction equals one. Um, that was uh, kind of adapted as this discussion is adapted from some very cool notes that are uh, linked in the description. We also have the chapter that covers the stuff linked in the description as well. Um, this is going to be our final video on branching processes. We've, we've had a bunch in this series. Um, we're going to be uh, kind of going back to the start and thinking about uh, what the expected value of the branching process is at time t. So, you know, in, in the 20th generation, how big do we expect the process to be? A shorthand is going to be mu sub t for that. I don't want to write expected value of x sub t over and over, so we can use mu sub t. Um, and we're going to see, you could already see those PGFs, probability generating functions on the board. So even though we took a little bit of time, a couple of videos to learn what PGFs were, you can see how they serve us quite well uh, in dealing with branching processes. So we're going to solve for this, the expected value of x sub t. Uh, we're going to remember these two facts. The PGF of x sub t, uh, the derivative of that evaluated at 1, equals mu sub t. Okay, and that's just the definition of a PGF. If you derive, put in 1, you get the mean, you know, at, at time sub t. Um, and the other uh, property we're going to use, which we talked about in a previous video, is PGF at x sub t uh, is equal to the PGF at x sub t minus 1. The PGF of uh, PGF of x sub 0, which is the offspring distribution, we can use x sub 0 for the offspring distribution. Um, evaluated S. And you can, you, if you recall, the, this PGF of X sub T is basically the PGF of X sub 0 of the PGF of X sub 0 of the PGF, basically ten to, uh, T times, right? So we just like take T minus 1 of, of those times and we get the PGF of, of X sub T and we have 1 X sub 0 left over. So that's kind of the intuitive proof. So we have these facts um, and we're going to start with this fact. We're going to start by deriving both sides. So here I'm just going to write x sub t prime equals the derivative of this guy. So times t minus 1 prime x sub x. And then because of the chain rule, I derive this and I multiply it by the derivative of this on the outside. x. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to evaluate this in 1. Okay, so we're going to plug in 1 everywhere we see s. One, one, one. And a lot of things will, will reduce. So first of all, this term, right, we already saw here that the, you know, the derivative evaluated at 1 is just mu sub t. So that becomes mu sub t, which we're, which we're solving for. Um, we get uh, this term doesn't change. Derivative of x t minus 1. The uh, offspring distribution, the PGF, the offspring distribution evaluated at 1 is 1, right? That's a property of, um, that's a property of uh, <coughs> uh, probability generating functions, sorry. Um, and then the derivative of x sub 0, the offspring distribution evaluated at 1. When we saw that the derivative of x sub t evaluated at 1 is mu sub t, so similarly the, the uh, derivative of the offspring distribution, the PGF of the offspring distribution evaluated at one is just mu, and we're going to say mu is the um, expected value of x zero or the mean of you know the offspring generation. Mu sub t is the expected value of the population at time t, but mu is just for every single cell what's the expected um, number of offspring. So what we did here is we we showed uh, something cool. We showed that. Um, mu sub t equals this thing. It doesn't look like we've reduced it that much, but if you cover up mu and look at what we had before, we had the PGF of x sub t derivative evaluated at 1, which is basically the same, you know, at the right side is the same term, but t minus 1 times mu. So we could keep iterating in this way. We could expand, you know, we could solve for this term, and it would be kind of the same thing. This this entire term, this or just this part of the term, the, the PGF, uh, of x sub t minus 1, derivative evaluated 1 is equal to the PGF derivative x sub t minus 2 evaluated 1 times mu. You can keep kind of solving down in this way, and eventually you're just going to get mu sub t equals mu to the t. Um, 
which is intuitive, and we've kind of seen this like iterative process before at PGS, and you know this kind of makes sense. Like, um, it's it's whatever the mean of whatever one cell is to the power of t, because we have we have t generations. Obviously, this is just the expected value. Like the actual process could go a bunch of different ways, but that's that's kind of what we'd expect. And you know, if you think about two cases when um, mu is greater than one, right? If mu is greater than one. As t goes to infinity, this, this thing will go to infinity, right? The expected value of this thing will go to infinity, right? It's expected to be to be huge. Doesn't necessarily mean it actually will, it could die out, but it's expected to be huge. Um, when mu equals one, this is just gonna be one, right? So you have uh, that's kind of you know, you you expect it to be one, but what's interesting here is that um, we know that if mu equals one, the population will die out at some point with probability one. So even though the expected value at any single point is one, we know that it will, will die out eventually, so that's an interesting little uh, thing. And then if mu is less than one, this will go to zero, which makes sense. If mu is less than one, the expected value, you know, as you as t goes to infinity, uh, I'm going to put it here, t goes to infinity, um, the expected value is it's going to be something less than one to the power of infinity, it's going to going to go to zero. And again, we saw that you know, if the mean is less than zero, the population will go extinct. So this kind of makes sense. We can also kind of use this to calculate um, m, which we're going to define as uh, m sub t, which we're going to define as the total uh, size of the, pop of the population that's ever existed up till time t. So we found the, the size of generation t. We can find however, you know, the total size of population that's ever existed. Um, that's pretty easy, kind of using this uh, this format. So if we take the expectation of m sub t, um, we just take the sum the expectation of all these other terms. These terms are very much not independent; they're very dependent. However, expectation, linearity of expectation, it doesn't matter if they're independent or dependent. We can split up the expectations like this, and we saw. Right, we know the expectation at time sub t, so we know all these expectations. Expectation of x sub zero is one because we always start out with one cell in, in a branching process. If you start out with two cells, you can just think of it as uh, you know, two branching processes. Um, the expected value at x sub one is mu, and then mu squared, all the way up to mu t, mu to the t. Um, again, if mu is greater than or equal to one, um, m sub the expected value of m sub t is going to go to infinity, right? Which makes sense if you know the total population ever expected value will go to infinity. If mu is less than one, this converges to one over one minus mu. It's a geometric series that will converge to one over one minus mu. The smaller mu is, the you know smaller this number will be. If it's you know one divided by one minus 0.9, um, then that you know that'll be ten. But if it's one divided by one minus 0.1, that number is going to be smaller than ten. So this kind of makes sense. And this is both in the case that t goes to infinity. Um, so yeah, pretty pretty cool uh, result. You know, very intuitive result that the expected value of time t is just the mean of the optimal distribution to the power of t. And you know, it kind of makes sense from here the total size of the population throughout time. Um, you know, it's either going to go to infinity if mu is greater than or equal to one, um, or it, it's going to go to some you know fixed number. Um, so you know, if you start out with a, a population, a branching process that has a mean of one half, right? Um, that would be one divided by one minus one half. One divided by one half is, is two. So if you have a branching process that has a mean of uh, the offspring distribution is a mean of one half. The total your the total offspring you're expected to have um, is is going to be two, which is which is pretty cool. Um, and I mean, you know, you can see it's, it's one plus one half plus one half squared plus you know et cetera et cetera, and that's going to converge um, to two, which is which is neat. So yeah, that's it. That's our conclusion to the branching processes kind of series. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Um, you know, go back to the previous videos. We'll link here if you have any questions, and stay tuned for another uh, cool series. We'll see you then.